Hey folks, Ori here. Hope you're all well. Uh, this video, as the title suggests, is going to be a plus 20 POV on Spires of Ascension. Now, before we go into the key, I do have a few things to say. A kind of apology to one of the members of the community, and also a word of warning that this is by no means one of the cleanest dungeons I have ever done. Quite frankly, it was a train wreck and a bit of a clown car. So, please do bear that in mind. This is by no means a perfect gameplay, and I really, really had my eyes open last night in terms of what I need to pull out and focus on going forward. Because although this group was with people I knew and people I have played with a lot, uh, we had Stormy and Puffk, who are both previous uh, guild members of mine. Uh, and then I also had Stitch and Time with me, who, as you guys both know, are from Calamity. And my group of friends from there. So, this wasn't a pug, but there were a lot of communication errors. And not only that, but a few people within the group had been drinking, so we really weren't firing on all cylinders. Now, onto the direct apology to one of our community members. Repentance, buddy? I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm sorry. I ran IQD for this, and I was still running the Divine Resonance Legendary. Uh, by the time you commented on my Sanguine Depths video, I we'd already completed this key. So here you see me playing as my most comfortable gear set. I will look. I, I have taken what you've said, and I'm looking into it, and will start adding that to other videos. Uh, I do have a 19 Necrotic Wake that we two chested. Uh, where I was practicing with Mechanicos, and I believe I used I rather than Old Warrior Soul, and I wasn't using IQD. But we'll go into that video uh, at a later date. For now, though, let's get into it. Um, I'll try to keep the talking to a minimum for this key, because I obviously want to get this out to you guys as quickly as I can, because I'm proud of it. It's my first 20 of Shadowlands. But at the same time, I need to focus more on what I actually missed. Because obviously I want to learn. I want to be pushing 21s, 22s, and I want to get back up to being, you know, top 10 um, red paladins on my realm. So let's get into the video. So uh, our bloodluster is our marksmanship hunter Puff, uh, which will cause a few incidents here and there throughout the dungeon as we get lust at weird points. But towards the end of the dungeon, that is communicated like you will get blast, then this will happen. So uh, big pull at the start. This is probably one of those situations where I can see from what Repent was saying on the Sanguine Deaths video. If you guys haven't seen, please go have a look and read his comments. They are perfectly valid. Where the extra AoE damage would have been a lot better and not using IQD. Um, because although IQD here gave me a lot of mastery, um, a stupid amount of mastery in fact, using the Eye of the Jailer Trinket may have actually been more beneficial over the course of the dungeon. Now, unfortunately... This is where the kind of communication and people drinking hadn't really worked in our favour. Um, the, sec uh, the second Rebellious Fist cast went off because Puff didn't kick it. Stormy had called that he was taking first Rebellious Fist, so Stitch and I both used our kicked on other things. Uh, I believe Stitch was focusing on a Mender, and I took a Dark Lash. Um, which meant that Puff should have made the kick and didn't, which resulted in three deaths. Now, Spies of Ascension is actually a very, very forgiving dungeon if the pulls are done quickly. And if the pulls are done in a intelligent manner, so you're like, I'm gonna say now that this key was timed, um, if only barely. So it's my first ever twenty timed in this dungeon, which is fantastic. I just now need to go time the rest of them for the teleports, but we'll get there. Um, but Stormy, uh, our guardian drew tank is fantastic at picking up the pace of these dungeons and these guys have been doing a lot more 20s like i believe stitch and time well time has every key done at 20 and i believe he did them last he did them all last season so time is a phenomenal healer a little bit quick to rage but that just adds to the humor when people have been drinking um i definitely need to work on my kicks going forward and being aware of them and 
as Repentant Saint, probably look, because there for that pack, I did 10.2k DPS. The other two DPS did 14k a piece. Now, if I do if I do swap to the Tempest Legendary, I can get that number up higher. It just means I've got to obviously aim my Divine Storms and make sure everything's done. But my concern is where my single target damage will drop because you'll see at later stages my single target damage is kind of what helps me hold my own within this key because doing this 20 i felt very much like i wasn't pulling my own weight now repentance if you're gonna if you're watching this buddy i'd really really appreciate you commenting below on anything else that i might have missed or if it is literally just i have to pull my own in aoe situations like how do you play your red um because I feel like I always need to fill a niche of some description. So you can see here both Stitch and I, because Stitch and I both have two minute cooldowns and one minute cooldowns and kind of playing around that build, you can see that we've both popped off for Incinerator, but again, kicks weren't called and they were missed. So at this point, I am actually calling out kicks for Incinerator and I'm saying like Stormy next, I'm next, or Stitch, you take next. So, I'd called for that kick, and I took it. Uh, at this point during the Discord conversation, Time was discussing why isn't there a clown car mount in World of Warcraft yet, and we were kind of just laughing and agreeing with him. Unfortunately, this particular pack, again, kind of becomes a kick problem. Uh, the Goliath has been marked, and I just forget to kick a Dark Lash, and I believe that's just the instant death of me. There's an overlap, Stitch gets his kick back. Stormy gets his kick back. My kick's about to come back. It came back as I died. So hindsight, I was I was kind of kicking myself, thinking that, you know, I should have had that kick there. I should have kept myself alive. But no. I I probably realistically didn't have the reaction time for it. Now, I could have stunned, or I could have blinding lighted, but something to keep an eye out going forward. At this point, obviously, I just hold for the res. Now, that wasn't necessarily needed. I didn't have to run out with the spear, but given the fact that we have essentially four melee DPS or four melee members of the party, I kind of wanted to keep it away from the boss as much as possible because we need to keep our healer in a position where he can keep hitting the boss. Because if you remove the... Uh, actually, before I go back to the healing problem, I was very lucky there not to be hit by that cleave because I went in front of the boss like a moron. I probably should have gone around the other way or just held patience for a second and then ran. You can see here a little bit of Paladin uh, confusion because I don't know who to keep my uptime on uh, and who to follow around. So you kind of see me stutter step. Puff takes a little bit of unnecessary damage there and time is just... Well, time is just being time. Um, but yeah, what, was, what I was saying was trying to keep his uptime enables him to keep healing um, with his holy power generation and everything else. Because he also contributes a fair amount of damage to our pulls, which, again, helps because we out of timed uh, my Mr. Tin Aside video, the 17 that I did, was out of time because the healer that we had in that group did not DPS. So. And to be fair, having the big red button that is Ashen Hallow 
um, is definitely fun. So yeah, unfortunately you can see here in my build, and again, this is a direct apology to Repentance, who is a regular commenter. Yeah. So I have my 21% haste. Old Warrior Soul is just about to drop, so it'll drop me to about 15% in a moment. But I'm using Old Warrior Soul, IQD, and I am currently verse, verse gemmed. But it's fine. Now, Stormy is Boomy Affinity, so is going to AoE pull everything and lost kited here. That's why we're all hugging the wall. Um, and I took that time to food buff. Now, unfortunately, because those two skirmishes left the way, we've now got to run up the stairs and kite round, which posed a problem for Puff because it meant that he whiffed his Kyrian arrow. But it doesn't really cause too much of a bother. Now, in, in hindsight, and from a personal thing, I've always thought that having 20, 20 ish KDPS in these AoE packs for a Paladin is relatively respectable. But I'm starting to wonder if with Tempest that would go up to maybe 30k. Which means that I would be holding my own against the likes of Necrolord Brute Monks. So, definitely look, looking forward to the next Fortified Week. Where I will have a upgraded Tempest of the Lightbringer. And I will bring you guys videos of that. Also, my, one thing I will say, and this... This isn't pertaining to this particular dungeon. It pertains to the um, 19 Necrotic Wake that we timed. Having Divine Toll on a 40 second cooldown is weird as hell. Like, it's fine when I'm playing Protection Paladin, but from a Retribution AoE perspective, it is weird the fact that it doesn't sync up with Final Reckoning anymore. But we'll discuss that when I release that video, um, either today or tomorrow. Another case of indecision and not knowing what to hit. Do I help kill the Preorter, which does the ranged cast and causes our tank problems, or do I smack all the AoE at? And this indecision is hampering my DPS. So my ability to prioritize targets and decide what needs to die definitely needs to improve going forward especially for these higher keys either that or the communication needs to be there so that we know who's doing what one thing that i do think that i did relatively well going through this dungeon though on a whole was my cooldown management i think pressing wings as often as i did Along with everything else, I did a little bit better than actively trying to hold everything, which I have been known to do in the past. Because I've I've held thinking, oh, this, pa this pack doesn't need it, this pack doesn't need it. So I think I did alright. Um, obviously, there is considerable room for improvement, and had this done been done flawlessly, or at least without the number of deaths that are going to occur, we'd probably have been in a position where we might have even two-chested this. So, th these double Goliaths had been called uh, and marked. I had marked Star the same time Stormy had, and that resulted in being demarked, but we managed to get it back up in time. Now, we're calling the kicks here. I've told Stormy that he's getting next on Star. Stitch is getting next on green. This was an Ashen Hollow pull, and things get very, very, very scary, but we managed to get through it all right. Now, Stormy got my sack as well there, because he called for sack, and I didn't know if time had his global available for it. So both our sacks are used. Stormy is in trouble, and I start wogging. 
I'm using Hammer of Wrath to get Holy Power off something that's low enough health. Another Wog goes out. Along with a health potion. Because time is calling out that he has absolutely nothing here and Stormy's in trouble. Another Wog goes out. And at this point, I'm actually just wogging rather than DPSing until we're back to this stage of having health up. That ice trap came out rather late, but was still a good trap because it removed the damage we were taking from from that particular dark preorta. So, not quite the pull that we wanted, but it kind of worked. Unfortunately, because it kind of worked, it actually gave us a false sense of confidence, and you're going to see just how that bites us in the ass shortly. Time's just drinking and eating, and I make the decision, do I need to? I then realize that I have a food buff, so just keep going. bit of lack of communication and tracking in this next poll um it's really not great on my part i actually force stitch to whiff his kick um because for some reason my brain just thought that this champion's cast was his first cast or yeah second cast rather than his first and stitch had called that he was getting the first so i uh, yeah i ended up whiffing stitch's kick by a fraction of a second because i was faster like an absolute moron. That's fine, the pack went down. Now, at this point, we were discussing to try and go for a double and whether or not we could get away with it. And honestly, it ain't pretty. Spear goes down. I'm doing next to no damage here, and that's a bit of a problem. Well, I'm doing 11k, but that in, in this particular situation, that's next to nothing. So, we've got kit, we've got damage going out. The Goliath's about to go down. Or, it's about to cast Rebellious Fist, rather. I get thrown up into the air, and I know, like, I do die here almost immediately, and I just can't remember what killed me. Because we've got danger, danger, danger. That's a lay on me. Oh, sorry. A lay on Stormy to keep him alive. And I just, yeah. I hit dirt. Basically. So both Time and I are running back. I swap. Aura to try to get back. Faster, because obviously Time got the combat res being the healer. And that, this is something about Spires of Ascension. It is an horrible map. You'd think that once you'd cleared these sections, you'd be able to just skip a section. It is nasty. So yeah, we're at, we're at 11 deaths at this point. Pack's gonna reset. So I'm just thinking, right, I'll get to the other side and I'll eat my food buff. So, 11 deaths on a fortified 20. Most keys at this point would be doomed. However, as I said, we actually timed this. And we had no right timing it. Yeah, I've got 15% haste. Without old warrior's soul. Now, I know paladins don't... Like, we prefer strength to stat weight. But... I don't like how slow and clunky the spec feels as you approach like the 12% haste mark. Feels like I'm hitting not very often and I'm not hitting hard enough to warrant that not hitting very often. Because it's not like a Warlock Chaos Bolt, sadly. Overlap on the stuns, so lack of communication there, but... Now you see, because the Preorta had more health, I deemed him the target for Execution Sentence, but what I probably should have done was just 
commit to the other one because obviously the priority moves Now, this particular pack is pretty much the last pack that caused us problems. Um, everything else after this pretty much pretty much went smooth sailing. There were a couple of like hiccups, but nothing really that warranted a oh shit until we got to the angels um, just before the final boss and just before Davos. So again, here we're, we're kind of joking and laughing about the fact that, you know, th like this, this dungeon has no right being still timeable, which it was like, it, it comfortably could still be timed at this point, despite 11 deaths and just a general, like what in God's green earth is going on. Now, the dark lash from the inquisitor was going off. I should have stunned it but I didn't, and as a result, I got clapped by an infused weapon and a dark lash. Time then also goes down, and we're just kind of like, what in the hell? Like, why? Really needed a clown car at this point. Um, didn't have my racial dispel, and should have done something. Now, I just run back at this point with time, and again, try to speed up the process of getting there. So I will skip ahead slightly. Because this is just a pointless run back. They managed to kill it and we're now at 14 deaths. Still timeable though. Now, one thing I will say guys is by the time this video is out and you guys have watched it, chances are my paladin is going to be a tauren rather than a blood elf. Now, the reason I'm changing it is to spice things up a little bit, but also because I want to set foot in PvP, and the arcane torrent racial is only really useful in an M plus setting for the dispel. Um, there are guides out there that say that the extra holy power generated by Arcane Torrent is now and impossible to pull off at the start of pulls. So it is because, the, and the reason for that um, is because you can only go into combat with one holy power, like stored up. So you need to basically racial within the first, or within about five seconds of the pull. And then once you're in combat, then you can throw a judgment. So you're actually behind slightly on the startup. And that isn't necessarily always worth the the extra holy power when you can compare that to 
like if you're bloodlusting on pull and you're getting the extra haste anyway versus something like the strike through the torrents get because that'll just amp wings up but the main reason i'm probably going to change more than anything else is just as an aesthetic change up Now, Ventanax was very messy. We got hit quite a few times when I shouldn't have needed to, and that's a personal problem with me. I'm not very good at dodging bullet hells. I always think that, you know, I've got space here, I've got space here, and I really don't. So I need to think that I'm a little bit fatter, and from an aesthetic point of view, my Tauren might actually make me do that. Because let's face it, Blood Elves are very small and very skinny uh, character models. They're very slender. If I play a big meaty tauren, it might make me go, nah, my tauren's not fitting through that. Ain't happening. So, who knows? I might become a considerably better player once I'm, you know, or a moose rather than or a miss. So, yeah, pretty much trash from this point ain't great. Uh, in the, it's, uh, there's not really much to talk about. We're about to do Executioner and we leave the other two boys... up for the final boss so we actually only have the two anima powers which is fine because they're both the dps ones and with us having two paladins a hunter a druid and a monk in the group the snare during devos is orb of annihilation isn't really that problematic and as long as you dodge her dive pretty pretty okay two minutes get popped Mm, I maneuver to get my extra strength bonus. Time basically says, oh shit, at this point, which was my signal to bop. Because usually when time goes, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, he doesn't have anything. If you don't hear him go, oh shit, you've pretty much just wasted your cooldown because he was fine. Now, Stitch was happy here because being a monk, he was like, ha ha, I can Karma. And Karma actually ends up doing like 14% of his total damage on Executor of Varath, which is quite funny. Monks are, monks are fair and balanced. And we did a 15 Plague Fall yesterday just for my key to get alts through um, on my Paladin. And I'd have, I'd have, I was on an iron about recording it, but in the end I just didn't. But there was a point where uh, Stitch survived. I think it was like nine stacks of bursting. Just because he hit diffuse magic. It was like, okay. But uh, by comparison, because the bursting stacks stacked so quickly, because it was just before the first boss... I didn't have time to bubble in time. I thought I was going to bubble at 6 and be fine. Nah. By the time we got to 6, I was already dead. Because it was just 6, 7, 9. And there's, I'm fairly certain there's a joke in there about why 9 scared of 7. But... I don't think I've quite earned the rank of that joke. You can see me there kind of hovering on like, do I heal myself? If so, what with? And I kind of honestly forgot the flash of light was a thing. I am so used to healing with wogs or portions that I don't often press flash of light, in hindsight. Something I need to work on. And also, just while this particular mob of things is, fight, uh, is going up, I would like to give a kind of a live shout out to Danex for subscribing on YouTube. Thank you very much, my man. Uh, your notification has just come up while I've been recording this video. So, again, thank you. And I'm sure my widgets will also thank you in the description below. I hope you've had a wonderful day so far, and thank you for joining the community. So, we're now at 16 deaths. Because Puff went down. Uh, and, yeah, we go into this. I'm basically being told at this stage of the fight where we're going to be standing. Because this is my first time doing high keys with these guys. Previous keys I've done with them have been 16s and 17s, which are still technically mid-range keys, rather than high keys. So Stitch is explaining to me that we're going right there, which is fine, and I just stay with the group. 
Now, as melee DPS, obviously, we've edged forward slightly, so we need to be aware that when it, when the next ordinance comes in, we will actually be dropping back onto Puffk. Yeah. Uh, now, this is something that doesn't need mentioning. You see that I turned to my Sharling of Doubt to try and get it, like, to immediately absorb, but you actually need to wait a couple of seconds for it to properly show itself, and then you can flick to it. Something some people may or may not know. If you see the orb spawn and stuff, you can't just face it straight away. So give it a couple of seconds and then twist. What you can try and do if you're a little bit closer, you could probably hold. Because you've got ten, you've got about 10 seconds to pick the buff up. So if you know that you'll say 5 seconds off wings, hold for those 5 seconds. Then flick switch to it and then pop all your cooldowns. So I'm quite fortunate here and then my minutes came back up during the burn phase which kind of allowed me to stay reasonably close to our monk's ass in terms of dps but still not the best something for me to work on like i do i know stitch has slightly better gear than i do but still i th thousand dps in it and that might be down to trinkets like repentance has me uh, mentioned before with the one minute strength and the eye of the jailer unfortunately getting mythic eye of the jailer trinket will be a challenge because my guild is not rerunning mythic sanctum of domination until sylvanas is dead now and we will be progressing freight scribe brocalo later tonight but it was fine 8.5k on Empyrean. Not bad. Or on Empyrean. Not bad. I have done better in the past, but we'll take it. So we've got 8 minutes to finish this dungeon. Stitch, being the math boy that he is, have pointed out that we have 90 seconds per angel if we still want enough time to kill the boss. So he's getting really, really, really angsty on timing things. So I'm looking at like cooldowns, trinkets, everything else, checking my bag. Making sure I've got everything I need. And we just go straight into it. Uh, Sharling's up. I'll wait for my Sharling to give me my strength. And then I go into the burst. Now that 23k crit that I had with Final Reckoning as a Tauren may actually be 25k. So... The, the extra strike through may actually be more beneficial through wings, but well, I'll let you guys know when I race change. Because obviously wings does give 20% increased damage, healing, and crit. It does kind of make me wonder whether Expurgation might actually see some use in keys, because I'm still technically running Templar's Vindication for a conduit rather than swapping around all the time. Which I already know in the comments is going to get me a slap around the back of the head. But the last few weeks, the only time I've really done keys has been during tyrannical weeks. I've kind of been in a position where with everything else going on, I've only really done maybe one or two keys a week. But that will change. I will get back into the swing of it. Now, the first one to die, took, or first of these angels to die, took just over a minute. So Stitch was kind of conscious of the fact, and Time was laughing and commenting about it. Uh, with the whole, like, well, if you're going to time it, like, you, 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 you complain when we have kicks all the time. Well, yeah, because I feel it when you cock up. And it was like, yeah, it's fine. Puff goes down there due to a spear, and I follow him rather shortly. Because he was going to go to combat res, but was then a thing, and I actually step straight back into a spear because I don't see it behind me. There we go. So we're at 18 deaths. 18 deaths, 5.30 to go, and I'm about to get a hard res from Stormy. Well, time sits and drinks. Because the interesting thing about these, you don't drop combat with them until their corpse despawns. 
which in season one was a problem for prideful because uh, if you were too quick you could actually pull a prideful mob while having to deal with devos obviously thankfully this this season that's not an affix but it does pose a problem for certain abilities or certain parts of the fight now here we were quite lucky in the the spear didn't whiff but it very nearly did um and that came down to the fact that our marksman hunter puff was having to summon his pet bloodlust dismiss it and then throw and in trying to do all that as quickly as he could he very nearly whiffed but it's fine Stormy managed to kite it into the thing so we ended up in a situation and the thing went down so we now have 425 to deal with devos 420 by the time she lands and we're just having to go so time held his big red button and everything else to just go with it and we try to bait the run throughs towards the orb so for abyssal detonations we're relatively safe now there's two things to note for this fight if you have the snare on you um that was a very lucky dodge by me i didn't think i was going to make it because that was a very late freedom on my part um when she's in the intermission phase it doesn't get applied to you she's far enough away that the debuff drops off and we found this out in Plaguefall as well, but in Plaguefall, it's the ads that apply it. So if you de if you attack the small little ads that are patrolling around, you actually get snared during the tentacles. But if you don't, and you just kind of leave them for the intermission phase, then you're fine. So you can kind of ignore the effect. Now here we communicate where everyone's picking up, so we get this phase done very, very quickly. Um, with very few stacks up which is good and we go straight into our two minutes for this phase so nothing too much to discuss it's kind of just rinse and repeat at this point and we start trying to discuss aside from baiting it towards the bubble also trying to bait it towards uh, Cryestra because then it reduces the amount of running we have to do as melee the less running we have to do the more uptime we have the faster she dies and the more likely we are to get this done in time because right now we're all kind of chomping at the bit 35 percent abyssal detonation stitch nearly went down there but thankfully it was all right Intermission 2, we all go to the same locations, or orbs, so going from left to right, I pick up the first from from the left, and everyone else picks up their respective one off me. So again, we end up in a situation where we do it with just the single stack, Stormy throws, and I believe it just generates a second stack for us as we phase into the last stage. At this point, it's 90 seconds, 900k. she done for and that was a perfect thing straight into where we needed to be so we can now just stand here and deeps and we finished the key with a minute to spare my first 20 timed so from that we were able to take a few things away for the key Spires of Ascension, first and foremost, a really a fairly forgiving dungeon, um, because end of the day we did have eighteen deaths at the end of that. Uh, apologies for that. Um, yeah, so Spires of Ascension is a relatively forgiving dungeon. Uh, there are definitely points where having a high AOE build would be more beneficial. So the next time I do a 20 key repentance, I will use the build you, you suggest. And again, apologies for not running that build in this key. I just ran what I was comfortable with. Um, but 
the other thing is because we did time it and although i was bottom dps i had my moments where i held my own uh, my average dps was 7.3k and our hunters was 7.9 so not too far behind could definitely have done with a little bit more sustain throughout the course of the dungeon and not dying as much because let's face it i face planted the ground hard and often that kind of gives us the confidence that we should look to be doing more 20 keys because previously i've kind of been like well i haven't timed an 18 yet so i should really be doing 17s and trying to time those 18s but with the right group perhaps we can just bypass that and go straight into the 19s and 20s especially in the next coming weeks if we have good push uh push affixes um so yeah the first 20 spies of ascension key done in time hopefully you guys have enjoyed it and had a bit of a laugh out of my uh clear uh newbie kind of mentality of what the hell is going on why am i getting clapped so hard and hopefully in the coming weeks we will see a marked improvement and i can start getting 21s and 22s to you guys but we will have to see how that journey goes in the meantime though i will catch you all in the next video and i hope you take care see you later folks